Call Senator Collins. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. President. The Telecommunication Interception and Access Amendment Data Retention Bill 2014 is a complex and controversial piece of legislation. Regrettably, the Abbott government has done an exceptionally poor job of explaining why these laws are necessary and how they will work. The government announced its intention to introduce the legislation in the middle of last year. The political agenda at that time was dominated by the Australian people's violent reaction to the Abbott government's unfair budget, and the Prime Minister and his colleagues were in a state of panic. It is in this chaos and dysfunction that the government foisted the data retention bill on the Australian people. There is one particular element of this botched sales job that I would be remiss not to raise at this stage. I'm talking about Senator Brandis's shambolic attempt to explain metadata or internet browsing in his humiliating interview with David Spears on Sky TV in August of last year. I'd congratulate David Spears on a Walkley Award for this interview. And while the interview may have been an outstanding achievement in terms of journalism, it was not the high water mark of public policy. Senator Brandis's performance was emblematic of the government's failure to persuade the Australian people of the importance of data retention. And I do not mention the government's failings or Senator Brandis's embarrassing blunders gratuitously as much as Senator Ludlam might like. I do so to illustrate how the Abbott government has failed to take the Australian people with them and win their support for the data retention bill. This parliament has no greater duty than keeping Australia safe from the threats of crime and terrorism. Maintaining public confidence in our national security and law enforcement agencies is an essential element of this duty. It is incumbent upon the government to reassure the Australian people that national security and law enforcement concerns are being appropriately balanced with the importance of upholding fundamental democratic freedoms. The government must satisfy the people that additional power is not conferred on our security and law enforcement agencies unless, and I stress unless, it is necessary to do so and only where matched with robust oversight and accountability mechanisms. The Australian people must be satisfied that by seeking to defend ourselves from crime and terrorism, we do not trample upon the very rights and freedoms that characterise Australia as a free and open democracy. And the Abbott government has failed this test. This failure has left the Australian people vulnerable to a scare campaign about data retention. Senator Ludlam, interjecting earlier in the Greens party, have exploited this vulnerability ruthlessly. They have deliberately and irresponsibly misrepresented the facts for their own cynical political processes. The Labor Party has found itself stuck between a rock and a hard place in this legislation. Stuck Order between the failure life. of the government to take the people with them on the one hand and a hysterical campaign of misinformation by Senator Ludlam and the Greens party on the other. Yeah. Remember the YouTube interview, everyone. This is an invidious position. Nobody in the Labor Party is happy about once again being forced to rescue this government from its own incompetence and listen to the shrieks down at the end of the chamber. But as the alternative government, unlike yourselves, as the alternative government, it is incumbent upon us, the Labor Party, to take a responsible bipartisan approach to national security and law enforcement. We in the Labor Party believe that our law enforcement and national security agencies should have the power they need 
to protect Australians from the threats of crime and terrorism. However, we also believe in the importance of protecting the fundamental freedoms that define Australia as a democratic nation. It is critical that we get the balance right between keeping people safe and protecting the liberties we hold so dear. The incompetence of the government and the hysteria of the Greens party have made it very difficult to have an open and honest conversation about data retention with the Australian people. Let me take this opportunity, though, to put some facts on the table. I have been astounded by the number of people who have responded to me the last few days as we have been able to clearly elucidate these facts, so let me do so again. First fact. Private companies have been retaining very large volumes of metadata in largely unregulated ways for many years. This data has been accessed by many dozens of federal and state and territory government agencies hundreds of thousands of times each year, with, in my view, insufficient safeguards to protect personal privacy. This is the status quo. This would be the consequences of no change. Second fact. This legislation simply governs access to metadata, not content data. This is an important distinction to make. Metadata is data about a communication, not the content of that communication. Access to data under this scheme will allow an agency to determine the time a telephone call was made, the number dialed and the duration of the call, but it will not allow the agency to listen to the telephone call. It will allow the date and time an SMS message was sent and the number it was sent to, but it will not allow the agency to read the content of that message. It will allow the date and time an email was sent, but reading the content that, of that email will not be permitted. Importantly, access to a person's internet browsing history will not be permitted despite the confusion called or perhaps it was a backflip subsequently but the confusion called by senator brandis's remarks during his now infamous interview on sky agencies wishing to access content data will still need a warrant which must generally be support uh, sorry be sought from a judge subject to the usual oversight and accountability mechanisms now labor approached parliamentary consideration of the data retention bill as an opportunity to regulate and improve the use of metadata for law enforcement and counterterrorism purposes, while at the same time introducing safeguards that will greatly improve the transparency and accountability of storage and access to that data. Another fact. Access to metadata is a legitimate tool used by security and law enforcement agencies, and it plays a vital role in preventing, investigating and prosecuting crime, including terrorism. It is not some grand conspiracy, that, uh, and those that say it has no role simply have it wrong. The Joint Parliamentary Committee received evidence of 21 cases in which access to metadata was critical to the investigation, prevention and prosecution of serious wrongdoing. Technological change and changing business practices of telecommunication providers means that less data will be retained by some companies in the future. This is the problem for law enforcement agency. There is a significant risk that this will hamper the important work of security and law enforcement agencies and lessen their ability to keep Australians safe. It would be irresponsible for the Labor Party as the alternative government to pretend that these risks do not exist. The bill was introduced into parliament by Malcolm Turnbull before Christmas last year, and it was nowhere near good enough. The safeguards were inadequate and the detail was vague. This is why Labor insisted that it be sent to the Joint Parliamentary Committee for proper scrutiny and to allow the public to have their say.
The Labor members of the uh, Joint Parliamentary Committee listened very carefully and forced the Abbott government to accept 74 amendments to improve this bill. To better balance the importance of upholding fundamental democratic freedoms with national security and law enforcement concerns. And remember, the status quo is not good enough in terms of upholding fundamental democratic freedoms. Now, as I previously mentioned, we have been particularly focused on oversight and accountability mechanisms. We believe these improved safeguards are essential to protecting the privacy of Australians and to give the community confidence that personal data collected under the scheme will not be compromised or misused in the future. Labor strongly believes that freedom of the press is one of the most fundamental elements of our democracy, and we will always fight to protect it. Labor forced the Abbott government to implement a regime whereby it will be illegal for agencies to access metadata for the purpose of identifying a journalist's source unless they first obtain a warrant generally from a court. There will be a statutory presumption against issuing the warrant, and agencies will be required to prove that the public interest in obtaining the metadata outweighs the public interest in protecting the confidentiality of a journalist's source which is central to the freedom of the press. A public interest advocate will be appointed to stand in the shoes of the journalists and, arguing and argue against the issuing of the warrant. These changes will mean much stronger protections for journalists and their sources, certainly much stronger than what Malcolm Turnbull originally proposed. It has been very frustrating that it has taken so long for the Liberal Party to agree to support better protections for journalists. It is even more frustrating that the government still refuses to acknowledge that the stronger protections secured by Labor needed to occur. It took Bill Shorten writing to the Prime Minister insisting on defending the freedom of the press to force the government to back down in this area. I'm told that the Prime Minister still doesn't see what the fuss is about. Nobody was worried about metadata when he was a journalist back in the early 80s, we heard. Somebody might like to tell the Prime Minister about the advent of the internet and mobile phones. Order on my right. Order. Internet and mobile phones, but I'll come to that point. We do need to better regulate this area. The old envelope versus content distinction does not encapsulate the intrusion involved in accessing metadata today. We can trace people's locations with these things now, Senator O'Sullivan, and you should understand that better. The Data Retention Bill will limit access to metadata to a much small number of uh, core law enforcement and national security agencies. Corporate and competition regulators will retain access to metadata to help them crack down on serious white-collar crime and other wrongdoing. But it's also important to point out that security and law enforcement agencies will use metadata in a targeted fashion to investigate specific subjects. It will not be part of some mass surveillance dragnet that is being suggested by some. Labor members of the Joint Parliamentary Committee insisted that the authorisation requirements for access to metadata be tightened. Before approving access, the authorising officer must be satisfied on reasonable grounds that any interference with the privacy of persons that may result from the access is justifiable and proportionate. In making this decision, the authorised officer should be required to have regard to, firstly, the gravity of the conduct being investigated, including whether the investigation relates to a serious criminal offence, the enforcement of a serious pecuniary penalty, uh, the protection of the public revenue at a sufficiently serious level, or the location of missing persons. And the reason why the disclosure is proposed to be authorised and the likely relevance and usefulness of the information or the documents to the investigation. 
Now, the data retention bill will also significantly strengthen the Ombudsman's powers to supervise access to information under the TIA Act. The Ombudsman will be empowered to comprehensively assess agency compliance with all of its obligations under the TIA Act, including the use and access of metadata. Oversight of the category of data would also extend to auditing the use and access to data retained as a result of the data retention obligation. This is a significant win for oversight and accountability. There is currently no independent oversight of the use of and access to metadata. Neither the TIA Act nor the predecessor arrangements in the Telecommunications Act included an independent oversight uh, arrangement in relation to metadata. Labor has insisted that the Ombudsman be given additional resources to fulfil this important role. Now, Labor has been consistent in our belief that we must strike the right balance between keeping people safe and protecting the rights and liberties we value as Australians. Parliament has no greater responsibility and it is essential that we take a mature and bipartisan approach to these issues. I am confident that the hard-fought improvements won by the Labor Party achieve this right balance. As I've uh, already said, Labor has pushed for comprehensive amendments to this bill, but there also remains some unfinished business. Labor remains concerned about whether companies should be obliged to store retain data in Australia. Former Director General of ASIO, David Irvine, said at a recent Defence and National Security Roundtable that he would be concerned about the security of retained data if it was stored overseas because it would be governed, in his words, by someone else's sovereign legislative system. This matter is currently being examined as part of the Telecommunications Sector Security Reform TSSR, a process commenced by Labor while in government uh, and which the Abbott government has stated will be completed well before the end of the data retention scheme implementation period. When completed, any TSSR legislation will come before the Intelligence Committee. Consistent with the comments of the former head of ASIO during the review of any TSSR legislation, Labor will insist on a requirement that retained telecommunications data be stored on shore. An extra protection needed for people even today under the status quo. There also remains unfinished business relating to the oversight of the entire architecture of Australia's national security agencies. My former colleague, Senator John Faulkner, who retired from the parliament in February this year, was a fierce advocate of this cause. No one should doubt that Senator Faulkner believed that Australia is served by professional and well-run intelligence and security agencies. But Senator Faulkner also argued that effective safeguards against the abuse of security powers cannot depend, should not depend, on the personal integrity and quality of the leaders of our agencies. If we are to have full confidence in our security agencies, we must have a suitable level of transparency built around them. It was Senator Faulkner's view that it is the parliament to which those agencies are accountable and it is the parliament's responsibility to oversee their priorities and effectiveness and to ensure agencies meet the requirements and the standards parliament sets. I agree. Senator Faulkner developed a set of reforms designed to ensure the effectiveness of parliamentary oversight of intelligence and security agencies keeps pace with any enhanced powers being given to the agencies. One key reform was for the Intelligence Committee to have oversight of some operational matters of the security agencies. Progress towards that reform is, ev is evident in some ways in this bill, which Labor pressed to be amended so that the committee could oversight the data retention scheme. But there is more to be done. And so Labor will bring forward legislation this year to give effect to the reforms proposed by Senator Faulkner to build better oversight over 
the whole national security framework. It is in this context the bill is first presented. The bill now as heavily amended Thank sits, you, and I Collins. commend the bill to the Senate. Your time has expired.